What's up everybody, Rabbit Hedgehog here, Indian of Oklahoma City. Another used bike review. And today it's um, one I have not done before. I did the bigger brother of this one. Ducati Monster, the 797. This one of course actually has a Vance and Hines pipe on it. 90 degree V twin. Great looking bike. Love the way the monsters look. Alrighty, fantastic as you can see. Good looking machine overall. To me, one of the best looking standards that's out there to be honest. All right, so on this one, come all the way down to start on the engine cutoff switch, hazards are here. And of course you go back up and shut her off on this side, information scrolling and also, you know, menu selection, stuff like that's there. This is also where you toggle some of your information here. So you go up, down, select whenever you get in there, flash to pass, brights, horn here. Got quite a bit of lights. There's shift lights, obviously, on this one. Turn signals here and here. ABS, neutral, service engine light, uh, gasoline, oil, and brights there. And then down here, you can see that you got a trip odometer and time. There's your clock, total odometer. So 67.2 miles on this tank, average speed over there. So that's all there. Of course, you control that. Of course, it does have side stand warning. Everything digital for tachometer and everything like that. Like I said, very overall cool looking bike. So at any rate, let's get it out, up on the road real quick and see how it rides. Now this is more like the FTR race in terms of seating position and everything. You're upright, but you still kind of fall into this one. Lower bars and everything like that. It does have an adjustable brake. Go ahead and adjust that smidge there. There we go. Get these mirrors adjusted out here. All right. All right, exhaust is a lot tamer than I was suspecting, but that's fine. We'll probably hear it here in a moment. All right, let's take this thing for a ride here. Now we're going to start with friction zone right around 3 o'clock. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a Ducati. <laughs> bit more growl to it. Good sound though. <laughs> Brakes are touchy. Hmm. Best left turn by a right turning Maserati right there or seen guys. So at any rate, so with the 797 Ducati, this particular bike is the more basic brother. I rode the bigger Ducati. Of course, it has adjustable suspension and everything. This one only has preload adjustable rear. Front fork is not adjustable on this particular bike. This one is just going to be the standard inverted fork on the front. This light is taking forever. have to get people on the sensor sometimes if they got to keep doing that. All right, here we go. Oh, that's a pretty neat little trick. Let's go up an RPM, the tachometer highlights where you are. That was pretty cool. So it's like if you get to the 3,000 RPM range, the little three will light up. 
As you see there, four. That's pretty cool. I like that. Neat little touch. Yeah, this is a... Not as fast as I was expecting, but freaking kind of fun, actually. <laughs> All right. So 60 miles an hour, this bike's right at 4,000 RPM. I will say that because of its short stature, I like the way the FTR is better because it's a little bit longer. So this bike is a little bit more choppy in the front end to me. Definitely lighter suspension on the front. Oh. A lot less suspension travel, getting some pretty good bumps in here. But sometimes it's more fun to fill the bike over some things. So I don't necessarily mind it, it's just something to note. Ooh. <laughs> All right, at seven, 70 miles an hour, you're looking at right around 47.50 RPM or so. So still not too bad. I'm in sixth gear right now, holding it just fine. Now there are no power modes on this bike as far as I know. That could be something I haven't had a chance to really look into. I never really messed with the 797. So it's the first time I've ever got to actually throw a leg over one, interestingly enough. <laughs> back pop from that good sounding exhaust from Vance and Hines on this thing sometimes that's the cool thing about getting a used bike you get something that's extra expensive to somebody else but helps you save money in the long run <laughs> and to be honest it's not obnoxious I was actually really expecting it to be much louder and obnoxious and in reality it's tame but it sounds good. It has a really good sound to it. Now we are still dealing with 20 mile an hour winds heading straight into them right now. And I am getting a little bit of tasseling here and there. Of course, that's also because these rain, um, you know, cutouts here and also the little bit thinner wheel that I've been riding through the last couple of times with. So you definitely feel more of the road coming through the wheel and steering this bike. Now this bike, of course, is very light steering as well. The suspension on the front, like I said, I think it could use a little bit more to it because it is very choppy to me, but that's also because I'm heavy. I'm 209 pounds, I'm six foot tall, 32 inch inseam. It's a little bit bigger than what this bike normally will target. But seriously, this is not a bad bike and I don't mind the seating position. This tank has really nice cutouts there. You can kind of see, and you'll see I'm leaning forward to where my feet are for my shoulders to hang over. So not a relaxed position of a uh, standard as most of these, but more of an aggressive near sporting standard on this one. And of course with the lower bars as well, you'll see it's pretty much well, my uh, shoulder to elbow comes down like that and then it comes down to the wrist. So it's all putting some weight there on those wrists. Well, I hope this thing's reports coming through this microphone. Now I will say, even though it's got taller seating position, down to the pedal box is not very much distance. So in a way, I do feel a little bit cramped on this machine. I will say though, there's not very much vibration coming off this machine though. Mirrors are looking really clear. Not a fan of the mirrors they, when I was adjusting them, 
it just they're kind of stiff of course they don't have much adjustment to them so you see a lot of your arm on each side so you're only seeing like half your mirror as being some of the lane the rest of it's you of course like i said i'm a bit bigger and wider and taller than what most people would think for this kind of bike But still, overall, I mean, like I said, you look down, you can see a little bit cramped up there. It's still not bad. Boy, this thing can get up in speed without really announcing it's getting up in speed. I kind of like that. doing some engine braking here a little 797 twin taking its way down nicely like I said the brakes earlier right off the whoo boy whoa <laughs> them's brakes <laughs> Forty-seven miles an hour in first gear, rips through really quick, engine spins up fast, acceleration is really nice. Definitely great acceleration out of this little engine. Good sound too. <laughs> get up to six gear here so I'm doing about 45 miles an hour here right around 3,000 rpm 2,900 3,000 so in the city even at that you're not bogging it at all it torque all day long <laughs> so no bog or anything like that it picks up right there top gear more vibrations more more things in this lower rpm this bike definitely likes to be kind of more closer to four maybe 3500 4000 rpm and it feels a lot better it likes it there golly those brakes are <laughs> oh oh okay those are better than the ftr <laughs> <laughs> yeah this bike is absolutely a cool bike and a lot of people will compare indians ftr and some others to the monster the monster is a mainstay in the standard column i mean it's been around for quite a while and it's a really well put together machine the fit and finish on it is awesome i love the color on this one Everything is tight, tucked away, you know, a lot better. I, I love it when they're able to do something a little bit better with cabling than just strapping it to the bar itself with a zip tie. I like seeing some thought into how they do it, you know, on a bike like this when you're paying this kind of price. And it's really well put together. Everything is tight. This steering, I mean, you flick your body around, the bike is gonna follow you very, very easily. You also, any, any input into this bar, this bike is ready to just grab and roll. Compression braking, fantastic. Very good transmission too. Very smooth up and down shifting. You don't really have to use those big Brembo grabbers at all. If you don't have to, you can just use that nice engine brake and get your way down if you've got the time to do it. And I do have to say the clutch is actually a little bit heavier, a little bit more sporting. It's not a light clutch by any means. It's, it's very moderate in pull, but it's very responsive. So you know where everything is. You know where the friction zone is. You know where, where it releases and how to go. It's just nice. Good placement, good for the reach down too to it. Not too far out there, considering it is not adjustable like its brake brother over here. 
but the lever is in good spot. Everything is really well controllable actually from the rider. Very good ergonomics overall on this bike. Like I said, I do wish that there was a little bit more room for my legs to go, like maybe drop down an inch would be nice. But they do have that pedal box way up there, give it more ground clearance, so it gives it a little bit less distance to your knee. If I had about an inch more, I'd feel a little bit more comfortable. But once again, like I said, I do have a 32 inch leg, so it's not a long, long leg. It's just sometimes the way my body's proportioned, it makes things feel weird like that because I, I have a pretty decent long, you know, hip to thigh or, or hip to knee area. So it does make it feel a little weird. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> Seven nine seven definitely has some great acceleration for for what it's worth. That little L twin, wonderful. Fun motorcycle. Very precise. Feeling is wonderful on this machine as well. Like I said, the brakes, if you're not used to this kind of braking, it will shock you when you first grab that lever. It hauls its way down in a hurry. Getting up on the interstate is no issue for this thing either. Really like the power output. I really like the delivery on this machine. I like it more so than its big brother. Seriously, this one's way more fun. This is really reminiscent, and of course it's in this little bit bigger, but close to the same category as the MT-07 from Yamaha, in that it's, you know, a little bit smaller, but light, flickable, wonderful, all-around motorcycle. And the seating really is not that bad on this thing. I'm actually comfortable, even though it's a thinner seat. This thing just sounds amazing too. Absolutely amazing. It rides amazing. Everything about this bike is really well done. Like I said, I wish the front end, front end needs a little bit more to it to feel more planted because the tire hops a little bit so it's not as planted as some of the bikes I've ridden in this category. The FC07 actually, surprisingly, despite the fact that it's more traditional, feels more planted than this one. But this one's still overall, I mean, if I put more weight to the front, that aids quite a bit. So if I lean more forward myself and get in a little bit more aggressive position, that aids that choppiness. This bike was probably more or less designed to be road like that, not back up like most, most of your standards. So this one's probably a little bit more designed for that sporting type. Man, this thing likes, likes to get up to speed too. Like I said, it, it's a very awesome bike. It's right between the MT-07, MT-09 and power. And, but I like the L-Twin or the, the V-Twin, whatever you want to call Ducatis, it's more of an L-Twin because it's 90 degree. But it really, it's an engine full of character versus the parallel twins and the triples in the NT series. And I just love the way it develops its power. It's so abrupt and wonderful. It's just, and it's brutal. <laughs> It's not, it's not designed to be a scalpel, it's designed to be a machete. And I like that about it. It helps bring more excitement to the bike you're riding.
And it's just a very comfortable machine to just ride around on. I know many people who take these ducks out for long distances and it handles it rather well. Does not have as good a suspension, of course, as the bigger, much more expensive FTRs, the heavier FTRs. Doesn't have quite as good a suspension as Big Brother. Like I said, probably not the FZ07 either, or MT07. But it is not the worst thing I've ever been on. And that's the whole thing. Even though it's a little choppy, little light here and there, it's still not bad. It's still something you could adjust to. And eventually you'll adapt your riding position to make it work. Like I said, I've kind of gone forward on it and it has very much well aided that front chop. Although that will take your distance riding out of it for a little bit. Man, this thing just, light flick of the wrist, the power delivery is wonderful, the feeling on this thing is great. It's, it feels precision. That's one thing that, that the MTO7s and some of those cannot even claim. The Jixus 750, any of them, they cannot claim this precision. This bike is just way more precise. Really well built. Of course, it is in a price point much higher than some of those others too. Here's a good bump. Right off the seat of wind. <laughs> Let's see here. <laughs> Man, this is a great overall, all around kind of motorcycle. And I really like the monster. Like I said, I the only thing I can really complain about suspension bits, and that's it. I, I really like in a little bit more distance to the ground. You know, maybe put a little bit better seat for me on it, give it a little bit more, like an inch higher or something for me. And that way I don't have that little of distance between my me and the foot box. Oh, this just sounds so good. But man, it's just it's just wonderful. I really enjoy the ride on this bike. It it is a it's way better than the other monster. I just I, I sometimes I just like the smaller bikes because you're able to take these bikes to their extreme much easier and it makes it more fun. It just that's the whole thing about smaller bikes. You're at their maximum faster and it's more fun than buying an expensive high dollar huge displacement motorcycle you cannot use get one you can use and you're going to love it and that's exactly what this bike is is it it's something you can get at a much cheaper rate and you're going to love it because it's it's just brilliant you can take it to its limit easier faster and more fun like i said you can see a little bit of that jiggle there when i'm holding it one-handed because that steering very twitchy but and that front end very choppy but it, like i said you put that weight on there it aids that quite a bit it takes it back down but man this bike this bike would be great for a track day this bike would be great for just goofing off with friends in the city good canyon carving material right here too very good put together bike i love these i love the way this looks <laughs> big giant lock thing on the tank just things that didn't need to be there but the little details are pretty pretty cool i mean that's just one of those things overall fantastic motorcycle on this ducati monster 797 so at any rate if you're looking for a great standard bike if you're looking for maybe a standard that you can start with that's not going to be overly powerful but something you're not going to just immediately grow out of that's like a 400 or some of those this is a bike that you can go to 
it's not going to be as easy as a commuter as some of those others, those lighter weights. So if you're looking for more commuting, definitely go for the, like a, the smaller ones. But this one here is such a great in-betweener that yes, you could use it for commuting. Yes, you can use it for canyon carving. Yes, you can use it for track day. So it gets a pretty good rounded reputation. Holds interstate speeds perfectly. Everything on it is really well built. Performance is something that, that just, it just feels precision, it just feels so good. And it's something you just don't get out of some of those other bikes like the MT-07. Just an overall great feeling machine, for sure, definitely. So once again, I'm here at Indian of Oklahoma City, located at 7 Northeast 10th Street, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And once again, not a paid endorser or paid to ride or employee or nothing of this company. I'm just able to take these bikes out and have a good time and be a madman with an opinion. And guys, this monster, I have great opinions of right now. So at any rate, keep that shiny side up, folks, and we'll catch you on the next ride. What's up, everybody? This is the Rabbit Hedgehog, and thanks once again for watching our videos. Please like, share, subscribe today if you like what you've seen. We also want to give a shout out to our dealership partners and motorcycle mechanics. We have Motive Cycle Works, Moto Guzzi out of Oklahoma City. They are both mechanic and a Moto Guzzi dealership. They are located at 906 North Ann Arbor Avenue, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma 73127 or 405-641-1801 or MotiveCycleWorks.com. We thank Don and his crew for helping keep our CX-500 running strong and awesome. Also, we want to give a big shout out to Indian of Oklahoma City, located at 7 Northeast 10th Street, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 73104, or 405 606 3615. We promise you, you will not find a better family in motorcycles that will help you get on the dream ride that you're looking for. We also want to reach out to any dealership who might be interested in letting us ride and get your videos out there and your motorcycles please reach us at the email in our about section. We'd like to also thank our sponsors, Law Tigers Motorcycle Lawyers, locally in Oklahoma, 405-276-4986, and 24-7 states everywhere, 1-888-863-7216. Also, Doug Crawford with Amsoil USA Synthetics. He can be found at usasynthetics.com or 405-388-6170, providing AMSOIL for our motorcycles and keeping them protected. Also, Enlo & Associates Insurance Agency, locally in Oklahoma at 405-261-1010. Once again, thank you so much for watching, folks. Y'all have a great one. We'll catch you on the next ride.